Lots of the players we've been talking about, they, they never had the chance to play T20. Yeah. And very many of them, you think, would have had the games to excel uh, and probably mm -hmm. make a great deal more money than they were able yeah. to during the, their careers playing test cricket. Uh, uh, firstly, on that, I mean, do, do you th is there any sense that um, the, the greatest Caribbean players, Barbadian players, missed out on those incredibly uh, lucrative years which we're seeing in cricket now? Or is there a sense that actually they were the lucky ones and you can't just measure riches in terms of finance? Uh, playing in a wonderfully successful team is pretty rewarding in itself. Yeah, but I, don't, I, I, I figure if you just don't look at it from the financial situation, I think that a lot of the players that played in my time and even before then would have loved T20 cricket. I think that they would enjoy that type of play. I mean, if you look at someone like Sagafi Sorbo, Sagafi Sorbo's hit six sixes and, you know, in a county game, they, these guys used to play um, Benson and Hedges games in England, you know, where they, you know, were very much expressing the, the, the aggressiveness in their play. Uh, so, you know, we had a lot of players, even the likes of Collis King, if you remember Collis in the World Cup, you know, you know, outscored Viv. Uh, we had someone like Franklin Stevenson, you know, came onto the uh, show with a very good slow ball. Keith Boyce, fantastic cricketer, you know I mean, good fielder. He, he would be an excellent choice as well. I still feel the likes of Haynes and Greenwich as well would be in there. And, uh, you know, it would be a very, very type, uh, type of cricket that a lot of our players would have, would have excelled in. Now, you, you didn't put yourself in your Barbadian mm -hmm. Test eleven. No, I didn't. But, but you, you, you'd be more confident of holding your own in a Barbadian T20 eleven. Yeah, if um, I had to select a T20 eleven, I think I would put myself in there, yeah. Now, you obviously had a tr <coughs> terrific... ODI record. I think you made a century on debut, didn't you? Yeah, I did, yeah, against uh, Australia. Uh, so, uh, so a very good ODI record. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, do you think that those skills would be transferable to T20? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I had the opportunity to play uh, a little bit of, of cricket for Middlesex. And, um, you know, there were times when, you know, games boiled down to a 20 over slog. And, you know, we used to enjoy it, you know, charge at the bowlers, you know run down the wicket and try to hit them over mid-wicket and hit it back over the head, you know, that used to be fun. It's probably the game that most of us grow up playing naturally as children, isn't it? Yeah, well, a, lot of, a lot of, well, a lot of school games are played, you know, only 20 over games, especially in England, a lot of kids play 20 over games in, in England. Uh, but in the Caribbean, I don't think that we've had a lot of experience of that. Uh, we always used to play a cricket match, you know. But I'm sure that the guys uh, that I've mentioned to you would be uh, considered to be fantastic one, uh, T20 players. So let's talk about some of those names. Uh, Franklin yeah. Stevenson is one that sticks out because I don't think he ever played uh, for West Indies. No, he played for Barbados. Yeah. So, uh, but he, he, he was ahead of his uh, time in some ways with that fantastic slower ball. Yeah. He, and, and of course he could bat. So he would have been a, a really useful all-rounder, wouldn't he? Yeah, he would be a useful all-rounder. Uh, <clears throat> he, you know, obviously with his action, with his hands and everything, all about his slow ball was very, very difficult for you to pick up. Um, a, and I think he got 100 for Barbados on debut as well. I, I'm not too sure about that, but I think he got 100 for Barbados. I remember I, I roomed with him in a game that he got 100 for Barbados against the Leeward Islands. So the, Windward, the combined Leeward Islands. So as a batsman, yes, you know, he, he would be pretty useful as well. Uh, College King. Another fantastic. Uh, tell, tell us about Collis. I mean, he, he, he seemed to hit the ball very hard, had a very large range of strokes, mm -hmm. but actually was quite orthodox. Yeah, and, and he used to, I think Collis uh, was one of those guys who, uh, he, he, even though he was a very aggressive batsman, he had a very good technique. You know, I mean, he wasn't one of those guys that would just go and slog it all about, you know. Collis had a very good defence and he was, he was, he was a very, uh, like a complete batsman, you know, but he just loved to hit it over the top. He would have loved to play T20. I mean, I imagine he has because he's played as a sort of semi-pro into his 60s, I believe, hasn't he? Oh, I think he's still playing. <laughs> Which is incredible, isn't it? And he always says <clears throat> he'll quit when his eye goes. Yeah. His, his knees may have gone, yeah, 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 but the yeah. eye has never gone. Yeah, he's still, he's still playing cricket, I mean, which is... Unbelievable. I can't play cricket now. I mean, I, Collis is a lot older than me, so I think he's probably 68 or 69. 
So to be still playing cricket in England, you know, is fantastic. You always ha you had another gear to your game, didn't you? You you, you could defend. You you could play to the match situation. Yeah. But yeah. You, you were mentioning a, a century against Pakistan, a test century mm -hmm. against Pakistan a little bit earlier. Tell us how you reached that test century and why. Well, I was I was 88, and it was the last over before lunch, and uh, a left arm spinner, Pakistani left arm spinner, was bowling, and um, you know, there's always some stupid guy in your head telling you a lot of nonsense and uh, the guy in my head was telling me look you know you don't want to go into lunch in the 90s you know you better try and get the 100 uh, before lunch and I slog sweep the first ball from 88 <clears throat> went to 94 <clears throat> and then I heard the keeper and the bowlers communicating saying bowl a little wider and as you know if you're going to slog sweep you know, you want the bowler to bowl it wider. If he comes a little closer to you, then he craps you. But from the time he bowled it wider, I said, wow, I think I'm not going to resist this temptation. So he bowled it wider, and I hit the next one for six, and I went off for lunch at 100. <laughs> now, that's the sort of thing that, had you top-edged it and, you know, been caught at midweek or something, would you have been in trouble? Uh, yeah, you, I would be in trouble in the sense where somebody would say, well, how you didn't go and make 100, you know, but... You know, you let your instinct go sometimes and you follow it and uh, you take chances, you know, that, that's, that's the thing, you know, you try to take chances. But it was a situation where I thought that the ball was there to hit and I, and I hit it. I mean, whenever you, if, if I could have played forward and get out as well. So, you know, it don't make sense uh, really worrying too much about what it is. It's what you learn from your mistakes. <clears throat> Pardon me, you learn from your mistakes and that's something that is needed too for you to become... A great player, you've got to make mistakes, you know, and then you've got to learn from them. T20 would, of course, have given you license to play oh, yeah. those shots all oh, the yeah. time, which you would have loved, wouldn't you? Yeah. The guys at Middlesex will tell you, you know, when in a Sunday League game is on, you know, the guys used to come up to the balcony and, and watch me um, coming down the wicket to the fast bowlers and hit me over mid-wicket and back over the head and so forth, and they, they used to love that. Mark Rampocash in particular. <laughs> So some of the other names that you were talking about who, who might make it into a Barbadian T2011, Cammy Smith. Cammy Smith, yeah. Very no-nonsense guy. He made 300 runs in a, in a club game here in, in Barbados. Um, I think he got off a of mark with six in, 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 in test cricket, you know, but a very much a, a opening batsman of a difference, you know, guys who just want to score. Another man who got off the... Mark in Test cricket with a six, I think, was Carlisle Best. Carlisle I think he Best, yeah. Hooked Ian both of the six. Yeah, I think he, yeah, and right in the Kensington stand, I think, at the time it was called. He he's a, 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 was another very talented player who very, thought. Yeah, he'd done very well for Barbados and um, went on and played a few games, uh, test, test matches as well. A natural T20, you'd think? Yeah, I think Carlisle Best, in, you know, in, in his days would, would be a very good uh, T20 player as well. And how about Philo Wallace, who obviously could give the ball a tremendous clout? He would be he would be a super player for T20. That would just be up his trees, because Philo was a no nonsense guy. Philo, you know, believe in hitting the ball. You know, he was a very very good hitter of the cricket ball. Philo. And he'd be particularly good when the field is up, presumably there's yep, opening overs yep, hit yep, over the yep, top. Hit over the top, yeah. Very not strong. A, not a strong strong fella. From the uh, St. James area, know him very well. I wonder whether David Hulford might have been a, uh, a really good T20 player, bowling, obviously, leg breaks and his batting. Yeah, and also a very good captain. David was a very good captain. Um, I remember playing my first game um, for Barbados with David Hulford. You know, very much a, a, a guy who, you know, used to read the play, very, very knowledgeable about the game, you know, bowl a lot of... Um, Bowled a lot of overs for Barbados, lovely leg break and googly, and, um, and, and a great captain. And he could have bat as well. You remember that uh, he got some runs with Sagafi Sorbers at Lawrence in the Lawrence Test, and he also got some runs for Barbados as well. I think he's on the Lord's Honours Board. I think he's made a yeah, 100 of the Lords. 100, yeah. Um, there, there, there are several other people we should mention, really. I mean, hardly played, but Ezra Mosley, I thought, had Ezra just Mosley. the perfect bowling action. Yeah, Hartley Allen. Um, we can call them, you know, there, there's so many of them that, that, that are there that could, you know, be in the T20 lineup. Now, it seems he's probably never going to play for, well, West Indies or Barbados, but Jofra Archer, 
Mm -hmm. You could certainly argue as a Barbadian and looks like one of the most exciting young talents in world cricket. Yeah, he, he, you know, from all reports, you know, Joshua, uh, he, 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 he seems to be the, the, the guy everybody is talking about now. See, England is very smart in trying to get him, you know, on their books pretty early. So uh, I think it's probably a great loss for West Indies cricket too because he seemed to be a very talented young, young cricketer. There are a few who have gone that way, of course, Chris Jordan as well. Yeah, yeah. you had Chris Jordan. Um, I think uh, Roland Butcher played for, for England as well. Gladstone the Barbadian. Small. Gladstone Small. Uh, Ricky Elcock. Yeah. Yeah, so, you know. There's a few who, who England missed out on, I suppose. Gordon Greenwich could have played for England, couldn't he? Yeah, Gordon, yeah, Gordon made that decision to play for West Indies, which is good. But I think, you know, it, it might be interested now, though, when we look at what is happening around the world, for the West Indies Cricket Board to start doing the same thing. Let us go and look for people who have got connections to the West Indies that are playing cricket and doing particularly well and try to see if we can get them into our system. That would be a good thing to do. You wouldn't think it was the hardest place to attract people to come and live, would you? No, no, no. It, it, I mean, look at all the coaches and the people who come here and work for West Indies. I mean, they, they enjoy they enjoy standard of living, you know, and, they, and, and you know, you don't have to worry about winter clothes. Funnily enough, the, the CPL uh, has been a, a, a good success, really. Uh, and uh, it looks as if it's going to go head to head with the new English competition, the 100, in years to come. I do wonder whether players will look for the opportunity of playing in you know, Leeds or Birmingham or choose to play in Birmingham, because presumably they're going to be after the same players. Yes. I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't know a great deal of what is happening with CPL uh, at the moment in the West Indies world. I, all, all I'm saying to me, I still think it's a pity that we, did not own, we don't own our own CPL. I think that if we, the West Indies Cricket Board, had ownership of their own Caribbean Premier League, um, I think it would probably have a better relationship with the players. And as you know, the Test cricketers don't really... Uh, the, the T20 players make more money than the test cricketers, you know, and if you own your own T20 cricket, what you can do is you can try to wriggle your contracts to make the test cricketer a, little, a lot happier as well, you know, with his retainer contract. Well, when we were talking about the test 11 earlier, most of those players would have had the skills to be really successful T20 players, wouldn't they? Yeah, I think basically even now, West Indians still do very well in the shorter version of the game. Uh, I think that that format of cricket definitely suits our style of play. Uh, it's shorter. Uh, our guys are more aggressive in their, in their batting and, 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 their, and their cricketing style. And it's really a type of cricket that, that, that suits us, you know, at, at the present moment. As you can see, we won um, the uh, T20 World Cup twice. And we haven't even mentioned Carlos Brathwaite, but that was yeah. a, a really incredible spell of cricket, wasn't yeah, it? A couple, of, forget, couple of minutes. I'll never forget that day. I was in a, a bar in Paynes Bay with some English guys, and um, I was saying to them all the time, oh, we're going to win this. We're going to win this. You can't have thought that at the start of the last over. Well, I was saying it only because that they were saying, oh, we're going to beat you. you know? So I, I wasn't confident that we were going to win, but I was saying, yes, we are going to win. And from the time he hit the first six, I said, oh my goodness, I don't think that the bowler is aware of what is happening here. He doesn't look as though that he feels that he's going to stop him from getting these runs. And you could have seen it, you know, you could have seen it. After see the first six. After the first six, you could have yeah. seen it, you know. He got, like, he got, what am I going to do now? And then the second one, I said, oh, that's it. He's gone. He don't know where to pitch this now. He's gone. It's and, true um, that if he had needed... A six off the fifth ball, you probably would have backed him at that stage, wouldn't you? Well, the way he was going, he looked as though he couldn't do anything wrong, you know. He was getting the bat on the ball, and then the bowler was actually, again, not really... It, it appeared to me at the time of watching the last over there that he didn't have a plan, you know. You can figure, well, okay, yeah, I can bowl it wide, you know, end of story. Whatever happened, I'm going to bowl it wide. Oh, I'm going to bowl it short. Don't care what happened, but he was trying to mix it up as he ran in. So something that's always very dangerous. That's one of the great moments, though, isn't it, for, for Caribbean cricket, for Barbadian cricket, that, that couple of minutes when a, a relatively uh, unknown young man mm. hit four sixes in a row to win a global tournament. That's a pretty incredible moment, isn't it? Yeah, and not only that, too. I think any W, 
any win at all for West Indies cricket at the time. It gives a lot of the young players confidence. It's important for us to have uh, a winning format and for us to have a winning team. I don't know if the powers to be understand the importance of winning. Uh, we had an area, we had a, a, a period where we won for 18 years. And, you know, everybody was interested in cricket. You know, it was generating a lot of interest. Every time there's a test match on, the whole world know about it. Apparently now, it looks though because we are not winning much, you know, not many people even, sometimes cricket to be playing and some guys ask, where? Are they really playing? You know, there's no enthusiasm at all. Well, I can only judge from Barbados because I live in Barbados. But you don't see the enthusiasm at all here when it comes to our regional cricket even now, our first division cricket, you know, it is there more enthusiasm. There more enthusiasm when you hear of the radio station having this conquer lines and this because there's a little uh, fat match that the guys have every year or something twice a year, and that generate a lot of interest. And I am saying that if two radio stations can do it, you know, why uh, the West Indies Cricket Board and 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 the and the Cricket experts can't try to promote the sport a little bit more on the islands. We better keep it positive for the purposes of this. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> That's true. Uh, you can so, cut that. Uh, so, just uh, w when you were playing, mm -hmm. were you aware of people of Caribbean heritage around the world following your progress? So, you might meet people in London or in the States mm -hmm. or wherever, right across the world who might be listening on radio or following the scores in the newspapers and taking huge pride mm -hmm. in the success of the team from the Caribbean. Yeah. When we go to England, you know, all of the West Indian community would come out and say to us, boys, you guys make us so proud. It's unbelievable. You know, in our workplace, you know, we can, we can walk with our heads high because you guys are, are beating England, you know. They, they used to feel and enjoy the wins even more than we used to do because they were saying to themselves, Look, this is a time for me to show people that we exist. You know, we are from the West Indies and, you, and we are beating England, you know. All the conductors, people working on the bus and so forth in England, you know, used to get phone calls from a lot of family and friends, you know, telling us, come on, you know. We just can't let England beat us, you know. How am I going to live here in England if England beat us, you know? They're... Well, they didn't have to worry about that too much, did they? No, no, no. <laughs> because we give them uh, some success with a 5 nil series and then in England and then we came out to the West Indies and we give them another 5 nil, which was good. And that's what we should be promoting the uh, cricket in the, in the Caribbean, showing our success. And you were aware, presumably, when you were in England or in Australia that... People here would be listening on radio, listening to every move, oh, yeah. celebrating and, your success. And, um, and in the early days, like, you can go to places like Pakistan and India, and you wouldn't be able to see it on television. So they'd be on the radio with the late Tony Cozier, um, you know, doing the broadcast and everything. And, you know, when you get a bad decision there, it's very difficult to come back in your area and tell the guys, look, you know, things didn't work out for you, like it was going down the leg side or something like that, because... The guys are not interested in that. The guys are just interested that you fail and, you know, don't make no excuses, Desmond. You fail, you can't play Spain, you know, you got to do this, you got to do that. So, you know, we didn't have the luxury like what is now. You can actually see it, you know, live that you can, you know, if you say to the guy that was missing, you know, you can actually see that, look, you've got a bad decision there, Des. Were you aware when you were living through it that you were part of something really special? Yeah, I was aware of it because I, I used to go to Australia of all places and see such a great cricketing country, uh, you know, turn up to watch us beat them, you know, and we never, they, they, we used to see the whole of Australia come to see West Indies defeat Australia and we never used to disappoint them, you know, we used to give, you know, really give them a compliment to seeing your team getting beat, you know, on numerous occasions. So at what stage did you realise you were part of something special or was it as soon as you made your debut? Because I think when you started, it was desperately competitive, actually, wasn't it? To, to partner Gordon, you'd, mm. you'd replace Roy Fredericks? I I repla yes, I did replace Roy Fredericks. Uh, at the time, all of the, uh, the islands in the Caribbean then decided that they were going to put up some, uh, I think Trinidad put up Gabriel, uh, I think Jamaica had Williams and uh, a few others. And then uh, they had Sebastian from the Windward Islands. 
and then Guyana had Bacchus. So there was a lot of uh, guys just came on the scene, you know, in order to fill that void. And um, I was happy that I got the opportunity to play the one day game and I got a hundred in a one day game. So it made life a lot easier for me uh, going into the, the tests and trying to be the partner for Gordon. Did you know that you were joining a, a special team or was yeah, it? Yeah, I, when I went into the team, I, I look around and I remember Viv saying to me, why are you looking at me all the time like that for? And I just say, look, you know, I'm amazed to be, you know, coming from Holdersill and in the dressing room here with you guys, you know. I, I couldn't believe it, you know. It was my dream, yes. I always wanted to play cricket for West Indies. But then for it to happen, my goodness, I was, I was over the moon. Was there a peak moment? I mean, I, I wonder if something like, I don't know, a World Cup final or at the end of that series in 84, which would have been at the Oval, whether there was a moment when you thought, this is pretty perfect. Well, I, I, I felt that way. <clears throat> I felt that way early when I, you know, get the chance to see. I think that the, the best batsman I've ever seen is a guy by the name of uh, Sir Viv Richards, I think. Um, and I remember I was rooming with him in the 1979 World Cup. And, you know, we were staying at the Russell Hotel. And I was finding it very difficult to sleep because I was just thinking about, oh, everybody in Barbados is going to be up tomorrow, really <laughs> watching this World Cup final and what is going to happen. And I look over the other side of the bed, I saw a man look as though he's dead, just lying there so peaceful. I said, what is this? And I'm back to the bathroom every now and then. And I remember the morning when Viv got up, he just stretched and he said, Desi, I love these occasions. I don't fail at Lord's. And I start saying, oh gosh, I back to the bathroom <laughs> again, because I was too nervous. And then, as it, so, you know, I got out there in the World Cup, my first World Cup final, didn't make many, got about nine or 10. And Viv went on to make 100. And that is, the, that is the time when I say, you know, these guys are, are good. And that was 1979. These guys were good. Is and it, we had a good leader as well in Clyde Lloyd. I think Lloydy was one of those guys who were very much a no-nonsense person. And, you know, he, he, was, he was a very good leader. It's interesting that uh, Joel took a fiper in that final. Yes, Which people that. don't really remember. And he, right. he, he, he had an equally good record as Viv at Lords. Correct, yeah. But Viv always outshot him, really. That's right. And, that, and then, then again, they both play for Somerset as well. Yes. So, and it would happen know, in Somerset finals yes. at Lords and as well. Had, yeah. You know, so, you know, that's, that, that was what... Um, and I, I, would, I would also like to encourage um, a lot of Barbadians to, you know, if, it's, if you find it possible to play cricket in England, I think it helps your cricket a lot. You know, you get a chance to see the ball swinging a little bit. If you're a bowler, you tend to really feel nice when you're bowling the ball and you see it, you know, going all over the place, you know, and then you've got to learn to control that. So I think cricket in England uh, for a lot of West Indies is a good learning, learning curve. So you would recommend other Barbadian cricketers go to England, yeah, I mean, learn to play even, swinging ball. Yeah, 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 even in the leagues, it doesn't matter who you're playing against because if you go and play against a farmer or whatever the case may be, you still got to respect him because, you know, he might not look to be the fittest person in the world, but he's going to do something with that ball. And I think that here in the Caribbean, where a lot of our young, young batsmen, what happened is that, you know, they are not used to seeing the ball swing. And when, when we first started, uh, they had a, a ball by the name of SMG, which was like a two-piece ball that they used to play. So everybody used to swing it. Now you could go and watch cricket and you watch the first couple of overs in cricket around. You don't see many people swinging the ball in the Caribbean. They wait to when the ball gets a bit old and then it starts reverse, reverse swinging and so forth. Right, which, but I'm talking about early days, you used to see that new ball really curving, you know. You had a guy that I remember as a youngster playing against, um, a guy by the name of Farmer. Uh, I remember playing against, um, what's the other guy name now? Um, and these were guys who swing, uh, Stephen Farmer used to swing the ball, you know, a lot. Um, and you go up to places like Windward and you go to Leeward and you see these guys. And, and back in those days, these guys used to have two-piece balls and the balls really used to swing. And that helps you, you know, you can't go and look to hit the ball through on the onside too much if it's, going to, if it's swinging away from the bat. But I don't see a lot of, I don't see, well, while I'm watching the cricket, I don't see a lot of the 
fast bowlers um, swing the ball. I think the other thing too, why it might have stopped them from swinging the ball is probably the ball now has a different seam. It is not like the two-piece balls that they had before. And the major majority of the guys like to hit the ball halfway back in the wicket to stop you from driving. So that might be the reason why the ball doesn't swing as much now here. I think they're using a Duke's ball in this series, aren't they? Are they? Oh, OK. Which is brave. Yeah. Well, yeah. but the conditions are different. You know, I find a Duke's ball in the Caribbean is different than a Duke's ball in England sure. because the surface in England doesn't really damage the ball as much as in the Caribbean. All wickets are very hard, very rough surface and everything. Which might be might be good for uh, today's in, um, intervention with the reverse swinging uh, type thing and and guys altering one side of the ball. What are we yeah, What are we <laughs> expecting in in, in uh, Kensington Oval wicket? Because it's changed a lot over the years. Yeah, you, sometimes I, I think I think we need to focus a little bit more on um, on, on pitch preparation in the Caribbean. I think um, we need to we might not be able to four drop-in pitches so we have to focus a lot on who is preparing the pitches and try to get the best people to prepare the pitches and try to get the pitches in as, as good a condition as possible.